General Motors Class II came with OBD-2 to meet the J1850 SAE specification. It's for scan tool communications plus module to module. Now, we didn't throw this in just to have something to talk about. Module to module communications means we can see the signal without having the scan tool connected. It uses transmission verification error checking routine. And it is, as we said, variable pulse width modulation meeting the J1850 specification. It was required to meet OBD2 standards. Its high voltage is around 7 to 7.5 volts, and we'll show you some actual patterns for that. It's a single wire transmit and receive circuit. What we've shown you, very similar in the introduction. As you see, we have a number of different devices all on the same bus. Any module can talk, and there has to be a set priority. And that's some of the things we've been talking about and we're always going to talk about. This is a receive transmit module. It's called a transceiver. It's going to put the signal out there on the bus, but we've got to see how it does that. It looks at idle and says, is a circuit idle? Idle time means you can talk. Idle is identified by the recessive state, and in this case, it's zero volts. Now, remember, this is important. It has to be silent before it can start talking. Any module that violates this is going to mess up all other modules, and that's going to fall under the data transmission verification. The high side, the dominant, is when it goes to 7 to 7.5 volts. So notice the pattern. Once a module finds a quiet spot, recessive spot, that lasts several clock cycles, it then takes the bus high and starts communicating. Now, if you'll notice very carefully, this is about 7 volts. The previous one was about 7.5. This is because different modules are talking. It doesn't mean there's a problem. You will see when multiple modules are talking sometimes, there are different voltage levels. This module came up, held the bus high for two clock cycles, that's two widths what you're seeing normal here, and says, I need to talk, then proceeds to start talking. This is the priority system we keep referring to. You notice the one just before this has the same start pattern. Any module on the bus can talk once it's recessive. And as we said, then it goes up here, it looks dominant for several clock cycles, and starts talking. This is important. The decision point in this protocol is at three and a half volts. That means everything above three and a half volts is high, everything below it is low. And you will see the voltage doesn't remain constant. This is a normal occurrence. We have multiple modules and it doesn't require a diagnostic. If your scan tool supports pinging, go use it. Decide if there is communications with a module or if there's a total bus failure because the two are significantly different. Again, we said this is GM class 2. It started being phased out in 2002 in lieu of the new CAN specification. The good news, it is on pin 2. It's a standard. It stays there on General Motors products. Great news. Finally something that standard that is in fact standard. Now we're going to go and take a look at the signal activity so you get an idea that we don't always see information. It comes in burst and want you to get a good feel for that before we go any further. Now as you can see we start from the zero line and it goes up to about seven, seven and a half volts. It happens repeatedly and it does come in burst. It's not a steady stream. Again, we hope you have a good feel for how this is going to look when there is information. But let's get down to diagnosing this type of circuit. We don't want it to be so complex. It's a star configuration, and one of the reasons we keep hampering on star configurations is remember that all the wires come to a central point. Now, notice here the data link, pin 2, goes to all of these modules as well as the PCM. That's an important thing, as we say before, but it has some downsides. An individual wiring open in a particular circuit on one module doesn't affect the rest of the bus. 
Now this will usually generate a U code. You can find it by pinging. You can find it by status. Whatever your scan tool supports. You can also find it by logical. There's a different situation we've got to talk about that's more complicated. A short circuit on any part of this bus will affect the entire bus. In fact, it will shut the entire bus down. Let's look at some of the failure patterns and how we identify and diagnose the different modules. We can start at pin 2. Remember, we don't have to have a scan tool connected because it's used for module-to-module -module communications. So if there's a signal, is it normal and moving? Is it hung up high and not moving? Is it hung down low? Now we're going to go look at each one of these on a lab scope so you can see what we're talking about. Here is a signal that's always high. Remember, high is the dominant state. This means some module has gone dominant and never turned off. Let me say that again. This usually indicates one of the modules has gone dominant and is not turning off. This pattern would send us to look for some, isolate the modules and find some module always hung high. Low, on the other hand, usually indicates we have a short circuit or a wiring problem. Not always true, but typically true. Could mean an open circuit and we simply can't see any modules because it's in the line going to the ALDL connector. If it's normal and moving, that still doesn't mean that all modules are communicating. It means some modules are communicating. It means the bus is not dead and it can function. Normal moving is somebody's talking about it. We need to go check for U codes because if we can get that, we might be able to go and see it. See if you can go in and access all the modules capable of being accessed by your scan tool. And the U codes are really beneficial if you can get them. Here's the problem with a class two bus. As you can see, this whole red highlighted area is the class two bus. You can see not the star pattern you expect to see like a star in the sky, but you see all the things joining at these splice pack connectors. 205, we have a splice pack where everything comes together. That's an important thing, and we'll use that for diagnostic capabilities because it's going to be important. But when an individual module wants to speak, we take our scan tool, we say, can I get scan data? Okay, we've got communications. I can't get scan data. If I can't communicate with a PCM for engine scan data, I know that something's wrong with this circuit or the PCM. Let me say that again. We've seen a normal signal. I'm now going to take my scan tool and try to communicate with as many modules as my scan tool is capable of communicating with. The first one is the PCM. If I can talk to the PCM, I can usually get a U code that will identify other modules that are not talking. If I can't get to the PCM, I've got a problem in this part of the circuit right here or with the PCM. So that's the first point to isolate. Later, I may want to go look if I've got a U code at some other things. I may want to see if the scan tool can talk to the radio. If I've got a manufacturer scan tool, I can do that. I can access the radio information. So if I had a U code, I would go see if I could talk to it. If it won't talk, then I know I've got something in this circuit that's causing a problem. Maybe I want to go talk to the OnStar. Maybe the U code points me to the OnStar. Try to talk to it, see if you can get to it with your scan tool. If not, we're going to have to use voltages and signals to isolate the problem. If we have a dead bus hung high or low and it's not moving, we're not going to get any communications. We're not going to get any pinging. We're not going to get any U codes. We can't get a status because we can't talk. Remember our failure patterns. High is usually caused, not always, usually caused by a module that's gone bad and stays high all the time. Low, not always, but usually caused by open circuits and shorted circuits. Either way, there'll be no communications possible, and we're going to have to isolate the modules to locate the SERP problem causing the problem because we cannot identify it with a scan tool, pinging, or status. 
Now, we're going to say this one more time. There's going to be no communications. We keep getting people asking us questions. Can I use pinging? No, we can't talk. So let's move in and see how we're going to diagnose it. When there isn't any communications, we're going to isolate them. Thank God somebody at GM saw the benefit of giving us a junction splice pack for a star connector. You're going to hate where they put them sometime, but thankful for the fact that they're there. Why is it so important? Because take a look at this Splice Pack 205. It's right here. We got a photograph. It's down by the steering column, just left of it. There's a schematic diagram of it. What we can do with this is we can use this to isolate it. But that's the good news. There isn't all good news here. I said, there's a picture of it. It's down by the steering column. Let's see what that means. Not easy to get to. It's on this vehicle. It's under the dash pad. That's got to come off. If you've got x-ray vision, you can see it. If we stand on our head, hold our nose just right, and get down just perfect, you can get a glimpse of it down by the steering column. But I'm telling you, as hard as this is to get to, it's far better than the picture on the right, which is another car we saw somebody working on recently. This is an improvement. It's better than the alternative. But when the splice pack is disconnected, each one of the modules is isolated. Remember our failure pattern? We're looking for a short or an open on the bus. We're looking for a uh, high that's a module that's gone bad whatever the case may be we're looking for now we can go look at each individual module by taking that out we've isolated each one of them we can look at them individually this is a big leap forward sometimes you're going to have to cut wires to do this when they use splices just make sure if you have to cut a wire you go back and put it a good connector seal it up solder it make something good don't do a jiffy connector thing insulation displacement but when we were in this mode where we have that's disconnected now no module can interfere or affect the other modules each circuit we look at individual so we go through and test each one in the splice pack so we're going to take our scope and we're going to go plug it in to individual pins now we plug it in here we've got our negative lead grounded we're going to take our positive lead we're going to look for our zero to seven volt module trying to communicate. Remember, these modules are going to try to communicate. But if you're going to get on the one connected to pin 2 and you see nothing, remember the wire coming from pin 2 is connected to your scan tool. It will have to be connected for this to work. As we move down, we see communications. It's normal. It's the stuff we expect to see. We get to one where it's hung either high or low, depending on the problem we're looking for, we have found the circuit that's causing the problem. Move to the module and its circuit to diagnose the problem. What are we going to do? We're going to go look at the input. If we look at the input and it's got a signal and we're looking at a low out here, we've got an open wire. If it's hung high and we get to the computer, to the module, and it's hung high, check powers and grounds, disconnect the module, see if it goes away. If it goes away, you found the bad module, replace it, and communications will return to normal. If it doesn't, you probably have a short to power somewhere. Not all communications problems are going to be a bus hung high or low. Sometimes, as we said before, you're going to be in a situation where it isn't communicating, it can't receive a signal, or it fails to respond, and this is going to be associated by U code. We keep harping on this because if you can get communications, and get the U codes, it will shorten up the diagnostic cycle. Once you find a U code, we're going to do the same type of testing. We can ping it if you want to and get a status. If that doesn't work, you're still going to come down to the same procedure. We don't have to go disconnect the splice pack. We simply go see if the signal is arriving at the module. We call this verify. We verify signal integrity at the module. In this particular case, we're looking at the instrument cluster. We've got a scope hooked to ground. We've got our positive lead on the input pin. We check to make sure we got good connections. If we do, we have good data there. We need to check powers and grounds and change the module. 
if the module is good, test its, if the signal is good at the module, test its power and grounds, and you have identified the problem. Replace it as required. Now we've tried to make this as simple as possible. If you have any questions, you need to go back and review this again. Use the space bar on your keyboard. If you get to a spot that you want to go back and you want to stop and freeze it, hit the space bar. The video replay will stop. Hitting it again will restart it, and you can walk right through and test just the way we showed you in this presentation. That's when it's called interactive video.